Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 128. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. You already know it's the boy J Brody, aka J Dot, Mr. Make It Happy. You already know. Copy that. This is a situation I always tell people. I pay attention to everything. I saw that the man has a radio station that said he wants all underground music, as you know, international hype, not just a hashtag. It's a way of life. I got folks from all over everywhere that I said, this is a play for them, not even for me. So this is an episode for y'all, not even for me. We're going to do a spotlight episode where Jay is going to put us on the whole situation. He's going to tell us all about his background. He's going to tell us all about the music, how it has affected him and all of that, love. Now, we're going to start it off with a reverse of the situation. We usually end the show with what do you need to know, where we learn about what it is we need to know from the guest. Jay is going to start us off with what you need to know, which is sponsored by H2H Cleaning at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We do roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, uh, remodeling, however you need it. We're making it happen over there at H2H Cleaning. Jay, tell us what we need to know. Hey, man, listen, there's a whole lot y'all need to know, man. I'm one of the best kept secrets of Philadelphia. And that's not being cocky or it's confidence. We ain't gonna we ain't even gonna sugarcoat it with nothing else. It's confidence. I did a lot of work, man. I've been working and doing music for a long time. I lost three deals because of other people. Um, you know, it just a lot of things that goes with this music game, man. And I'm saying I'm 47 now. Politics. Yeah, it's the politics of it all. It's the it's the fact that people is it's the hate. Like people know that. When you move like a boss and they see it, oh, they'll slow you down so you won't get to where you want to be in this city. It it changed. Things change. And this game is really, like you said, politics and bullshit. We got a problem in the city where uh, we can't support each other. We got to wait till somebody else supports our situation, tells us it's hot, tell us it's cool, tell us it's decent before we jump on it. And I'm all about somebody doing something in the city. And it's on some straight up and down. It's business. It's positive type time. Let's shine a light on it. Let's put it out there for the world to see. Let's not just keep it here because we can't focus on here. We got to focus on everybody everywhere but here. Here's going to happen. Like, listen, here's going to happen after we get everybody else. And see, I'm the big homie of that, bro. I've been doing that shit for years in this city, bro. I've been putting people in positions for years in this city, bro. I done helped niggas start labels. I done helped niggas start studios. I done helped niggas develop who they really is at at their craft. You know what I'm saying? And it's not me trying to get a pat on my back. It's I've been trying to help create the unification that we need to win. They don't understand. You can win by yourself, but you're not going to win as much. You can win a hundred. You can say say you can win a hundred thousand, but with the right team, you can win a thousand million. Just hey, giving you a number. It's the it's the mindset. Yeah, and no, no, no facts. Problem. But the, the problem see, the mindset will, will let you know. The mindset will let you know it takes a team to win, bro. Nah, but the mindset will be, uh, I gotta get mine instead of us trying to get it. Well, that's selfishness. I mean, but that's most of us. Yeah, which is the yeah, and that is. But I wasn't <laughs> raised that way, so that that's to me is it, it, like I'm not judging people that think that way, and I understand that lifestyle makes you go that in that direction, especially living in flesh, especially living in poverty for so long. It, it, it can tear you down to have your mindset in that manner, but you also. Got to understand where there's bad, there's good. You got you got to keep your mind going in the right positive direction, man. If you looking for negativity, then that's you. That's right up your alley. Yeah, you know right, so I did an episode. Uh, judgments are fine. Everybody judges everybody. Yeah, they and, do. <laughs> and people be like, people always say like, uh, you can't judge me. It's like only God can judge me. Only God can send you to hell. But everybody judges you every day. Yeah. <laughs> so 
my joint will always be like, yes, it's, it's your outlook, it's your mentality, it's the way you was brought up. It was the old heads that you had when you was a kid and who framed your mind when you was a teenager and what life has taught you and the, play, the cards you've been dealt. All of that is true. But the thing always is that it's three niggas in Houston who thinking and moving, trying to move exactly like you try to move. It's three niggas in Arkansas. It's three niggas in Oakland. It's three niggas in I try Oregon. to tell these niggas every day that that, that mentality, bro. Yeah, like the I tried to tell so niggas much, this 10 years ago, though. The world you know is so saying? much bigger than both ends of your block, and people can't see it, which is perfectly fine, which is why I always tell niggas, I'm, I'll let you know once I get there. I'll let you know if I can help you on the way there. But that's the ones you, that end up jealous and being haters, though. And because they're going to sit there and stay on the block. And you going to move around and they're going to start watching you. Like, damn, so-and-so doing this. So-and-so doing that. Damn, Nigga, bro, you don't fuck this. with us like that no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All the nut yeah. shit because you can do it too. Yeah, you know you what I'm saying? We all get the same 24 look. hours, man. All right. Now, let's uh let's go back. Now, my bad, we all we got off, ten, we got yeah, off yeah, on the tangent. Yeah. Let's uh stay on task now. The station. I know you said you do artist development. Talk to us about the station. Tell the people where they can all find right, the, well, the station. Tell them how station. to send the music in. Tell them about right. your artist development. Break it all down for them. Okay. All right. Well, what happened was I was my thing is like you know, I like to hear unsigned original artists, and I believe that we all deserve a chance to be heard. But being as though the game is getting so, it's so, everybody hand getting grease. So everybody greedy. So my mm -hmm. whole thing was to bring back a platform for those that are serious and deserve the right to hit their music heard. That's where Family Affair Radio was developed at. I came with a way that where though I can make a platform for all the underground artists that grind hard and still don't get heard. Well, I'm here to help you get heard. We, all you got to do is send in your music. I'm taking three songs. All you got to do is send it to New Family Management at gmail.com and you go in rotation ASAP and then and, and, and to make it make it even a plus plus if you have your song exchange re registrations you can also get paid for this whole cycle of what we doing so not only do you get your music heard but you can start earning from your music make sure professional you know what I'm saying? Makes you a businessman. Now Now you're stepping, you can call it an entrepreneur, however you want to say it. But now you're starting to make money from your music. You, you deserve, every artist deserves to make something back as they put in on yourself. When you invest in yourself, you should be getting something back. It's a lot of engineers out here. It's a lot of fake-ass managers out here. And they will send you down the wrong path having you believe in all the wrong things. So what I'm doing is I just want to make a way for you to help yourself get to a better destination. That's all. That's it. I don't want nothing from you. I ain't going to make nothing from you. I ain't going to steal your song. That ain't what I'm here for. I'm all about positivity. I just want to see you win. And I want to see the right people win. So when I started in the podcast business, uh, business as i can see my bio says professional anything you can pay for make sure professional um i started with national underground which was shout out to wtnufilly.com t was doing the same thing all underground music all unsigned artists trying to get the door open for them i like i said if you're doing something in the city and it's positive i love all of that let's pump that let's promote that so when i saw this post on instagram I hit you instantly and said, this sounds like an episode. <laughs> you hear me? Let's do it. And this is why I wanted to bring you here. Now, I want you to now tell us about artist development. What do you do in the artist development? How do you help them out well, that way? See, see, I have my own kind of way of artist development because I, I've ran, I ran also, I have, I've ran my own studios and I help. Come on, give us, give us all that. That's it. We, okay. We well, I, ended up saying, well that. I, I ran my own <laughs> studios for about five to seven years. I used to live out in uptown. You know what I'm saying? So I started the studio. I started the studio because I couldn't get in the studio nowhere else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At this time, they wouldn't let everybody in the studio. 
because they thought other people were hotter than you, you got pushed to the side or you had to wait or, you know what I'm saying? Politics. So <laughs> I basically, I, I just got smart. You ain't going to stop me. I'm a determined nigga. So I went and got the whole motherfucking setup and put it. I mean, I started with a motherfucking um, desktop. Yeah, I'm saying monitor and a motherfucking microphone. And we started going there. But my trick to my my um to my development is see everybody have their own different personality and everybody came from their own different story. So you can't speak, talk, or direct people in the same way all at the same time. So what I would do is I would instead of attacking them and making them feel defensive, I would give them. I would challenge them with bars. So they would get on a song with me. I would do a hook, I would do a verse. And nigga had to have a 16 to match. And my thing was, I wasn't cussing. I ain't pick, I don't pick cuss words in my stuff. I know how to spit bars without using cuss words to make me sound better. Yeah, you know I'm saying? That's so when I true. started doing that, I started making, I got a lot of, like I told you, I got a lot of cousins. They, I got like 13 of them that rap. So they was over my house 24 seven. We in the crib from soon as my baby mom leave to work and I drop my kids off the school is me, my son and about eight of my motherfucking cousins in the house from fucking eight 30 in the morning to four 30 in the afternoon, dropping songs. We dropping eight, nine songs a day. Mm. And that was the repetition of me getting them on a shit. And then after that, I start teaching them niggas how to engineer they so because I got tired of motherfuckers being lazy. Like, nigga, I'm putting the work and I did the hook, I did the verse, I did the engineer. What do you do? You want me, you want me to spit your verse too? <laughs> God damn, you feel me? Look, I, I I got so I got so petty with niggas, but they learned. This was the whole thing. They learned. I got so petty with niggas, I used to go upstairs and, and go play motherfucker um, I used to go play motherfucker on 2K while they was recording. And they had to do their own shit. That ain't petty though, that and that's teaching a nigga some work ethic. That's teaching no, that's what I'm saying, but that's how that's I teaching it. you how to teach your artist, how it's teaching you how to get an artist. That's the life skills that niggas be needing, especially if you want to be involved in any type of business situation. This and for right, sure, they, they were serious. I wanted them to actually have something. I wanted them to know their own shit because I'm not gonna be around all the time. I'm gonna be I'm a, I'm slide. Motherfuckers say come to New York today, I'm out. That was the type of nigga I was. I used to go to New York and do songs with niggas out New York. You know what I'm saying? Niggas out motherfucker Pittsburgh. Motherfucker call me, I'm out there. And I wasn't even doing, I wasn't doing paid features. I was dropping songs. I got over a thousand songs because I did a, I did songs with everybody. Germany, what, you name it, I was doing it with everybody. What's your favorite joint that you got? What, I got a couple of them though. I ain't gonna lie because I'm the type of artist that really listen to itself. Like, see, people don't listen to themselves enough to understand their craft. This is the reason why niggas don't really go to the next level. That's why you don't get so, better, yeah? Right. See, me, I I listen to Brody. Twenty four seven. I might slide in some R and B. You know what I'm saying? When it's time to get some Yamakins, but you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm listening to Brody, but majority of the motherfucking day. You know what I'm saying? Since you brought that up, we gonna put a pen in that one, and we gonna we gonna pull that one back out later. <laughs> um, so, see the way that you're talking. See, I know this stuff because we talked on the phone. Right. right. The way that you're talking is just the same outlook that I put into the podcast shit. Where I learned all this shit by doing podcasting by being involved in all the aspects of doing it to the point where that was how I did how to hustle seminars. Now let's put the seminar out there to start to give other people these tools and all of that to grow and build your own situation. It's not yeah. always about trying to do something for yourself because yeah. if everybody elevates and it elevates you too, same thing like you're saying as far as the game tape, that's one of the yeah. things inside of the, the seminar that I talked about. I don't know how people do podcasts that they don't listen to. We all killed Ben Simmons for years about never working on his game. This bum ass nigga came in and couldn't score a basket his first year. He was in year eight and still couldn't score a basket. <laughs> yeah. And it was because you could tell he never developed his game. He never worked on his craft. If you never listen to yourself and hear what you sound like, you know, for podcasting or for music, this is why I tell people in music, you got to get with people who do podcasts because they know how to do an interview. Right. And if you know what you're doing, if you're good at this, a lot of people right, got exactly. a podcast. A lot of people ain't good at this. So my bad. But, <laughs> um, 
you got to know your own cadence. You got to know when to pause. You got to know when to relax. You got to know when to speak up. You got to learn all of that, though, by doing a song. And if you just make songs, make songs, make songs, and never listen to this shit, how do you expect the, this song to be better than the last 25 that you did? Especially right. if you said, we banging them out eight a day. If we banging them out eight a day and we're not listening to none of this shit and making sure you're not saying the same shit on three songs, giving the same metaphor, but uh -huh. finding a different way to use it, like, you have to review I, I used to have family. Too. You know, it's crazy not to cut you off. My my family members, we used to do shows because, like, my family, we was really, like, really going at this shit for, like, five years. We, we was called Family Ties. We was in the city. We had shit on it. We had commercials on the radio. We paid for all this shit ourselves out of pocket. We had commercials on the on radio. We had the um, open mic. We had the um, rock the mic on Thursdays down at um, Germantown and Sun, um, Somerset. Rise of Sun. Rise of Sun. Germantown and Rise of Sun. We had the little joint on the corner, little bar on the joint. So we used to be in there rocking, and they used to thought I thought I was a maniac because not only did I know my raps, I knew all eight of the other niggas that was in there that was a part of the group. So when we did songs, I I would I rap. I was the hype man and the rapper. Mm -hmm. yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's how in tune I am to what I'm doing. That's you feel the detail. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, and that's and see, and that's my thing. Like, no, I became, I I became a, a a mad scientist when it became the rap. Like, I used to play ball, but I, I am saying I got shot. I was trying to go on the end one joint. They used to call me on Mister Excuse Me out Southwest. My handles and shit. I crack niggas. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? That was my shit. That's what they used to call me out Southwest. And I got niggas to vouch for. So anybody want to ask a question, I tell you no lies. You heard me. You know what I'm saying? So. And when I was out there and shit, um, we used to be out there all the time and shit. So I, you know, I, I, I was just putting shit together. All right. So now we are gonna switch this one up. Now that we get to learn a little bit more about you, since you put this and said we put the pen in it, we gonna pull that pen yeah. now. All right. This is to get the. I, I, I ain't mean to. It just part is it, a part of me. That's again, you listening to your game tape, paying attention to the guests and what's going on around you. Very right. important when you're doing yes, these sir. type of situations. But this uh. This uh, this bar, this portion of the podcast is sponsored by Custom Hustle. That is Custom Hustle or Instagram, Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co on Twitter. That is my clothing line. We do roof. We, and I'm about to give you the rundown for the uh, H2H cleaning. We do custom sneakers. Four versions of the sneakers: the ones, twos, and threes are the CH ones, twos, and threes, and fours. Cause I got four versions of the sneaks. I got flip flops. We got the football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and soccer jerseys. Mm. We got the custom jackets. We got the collar shirts. We got the cargo pants in now. And we're working on some new merchandise. So you get with us at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, and we will customize all your needs. Now, uh, yeah, though. you said now, when I'm getting it popping, I might throw in some R&B. <laughs> yeah. Now. Give me at least two joints that you're gonna go to when you get your RB when you get your when you get in the popping. What's the situation? What are we um, doing? I mean, see, some of y'all might not remember these joints. I'm gonna keep it real with you, but my first joints I'm gonna go to is um, you know, I'm gonna hit you with a little jealousy. Okay. Come, come and talk to me. Come and talk. I really want to yeah, I got that. Yeah, in my phone. Then, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then yeah, you know I'm saying I might, I might, I might switch it up and hit him with a little Jay Holiday. You know what I'm saying? Dead. Or suffocator, you know what I'm saying? Just, I got like, both of them in my phone. Yeah, funny yeah, story I'm about saying. Jay Holiday. <laughs> since since you brought the nigga up, funny story about Jay Holiday. I used to work security for concerts. This nigga got laws coming from Oregon Diner. They couldn't find South Street. <laughs> 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 this nigga, this nigga was like uh, like three hours late because they couldn't get back to South Street. Mm. Um, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Nah, you go the wrong way. Concert. You go the wrong way down South Philly. You is a rap. You go the wrong way for a minute. Jay Holiday Trey Songs concert, best joint I ever been to. It was like eight niggas in the building. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, that's what you see. Niggas don't know how to get girls. I would have been there too. I'd have been a ninth nigga. All right, yeah, I was security. Right, <laughs> you do shit. Now, let me throw out a couple different. I'm gonna throw out some uh, some groups. I'm gonna throw out some labels. You tell me the first thing that come to your mind when you hear these. Death Row. Major. Major is what you think of, is it? Yeah, they was major. They was major. When they had their time, they was major. Like, you, you can speak of it now because of all the 
um, you know, the exposing and all the shit that you know about should. No, no, no. Just it's yeah. Did we just going first thing that come to your head? You said was yeah, major, they was okay? major. The whispers. Oh, that oh, that's that that baby making music. You already know. <laughs> so so deaf. That's my um. That's my my my, my bounce music self. So, you know what I'm saying? That bounce right there. You know what I mean? Jermaine Dupree, the Brett, you know what I'm saying? Bow Wow, that's that bounce music. Okay. Now, since you brought him up, I'll give you this last one, Jodeci. Jodeci, man, I'm going to say phenomenal group. Phenomenal group. Because all, all these right. dudes, all them dudes, all these dudes, not to stop, you know what I'm saying, because I know you was in the middle was about to say something else, but all them dudes after them, they can't front. That's just like saying Kobe didn't get nothing from George. You nah, feel what Kobe I'm saying? Told you he got all his, he got a bunch of shit. But these money. niggas that say they ain't getting nothing from Judas. Like, come on, bro. People don't like to give play homage and give credit these days. Oh, that's, dumb, that's, 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 that, that's the hardest shit in the world, bro. The hardest, yeah. Niggas act like it's impossible <laughs> to acknowledge. Niggas <laughs> act like uh, it's impossible to acknowledge that you like something that somebody else is doing and tell them why they hear the note to hear it. And I think that that's the dumbest shit ever. You know what's um, you know what's another thing. I ain't gonna go off board. I ain't gonna go off board. We'll talk about that. <laughs> I give you another one now. We gonna throw out a year. You tell me what you think about when you get this year, nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Fat yeah. Joe dropped his album. When Fat Joe dropped his album. <laughs> that's what you. Yeah, I was okay. in. The, I was in the music, bro. Like that's all I was in the music and basketball. Like music and basketball was my life before I, I got shot four times and shit. That's what stopped my career in basketball. But you know what I'm saying music and basketball, that's all I and I love basketball more than I love music at one point. Since you brought this one up now, you said you got shot four times. What changed your what changed your perspective after you did get shot? How old was you when you got shot? Um I got shot twice in one year, um three months apart. And how old was you like? I was about 26, maybe 27. Okay. And what you know I'm saying? I was a working man though, for real, for real, bro. I was I was doing a little street shit, you know what I mean? Sell a little weed here and there, but I was a working man. I worked at Wendy's for about eight, nine years straight. So when when that happened, did that change anything for you? Your perspective changed? I mean, at first, I'm going to keep it real with you. It, it made me paranoid. I was paranoid now. I was moving around different. I, it, it, it took me down. I, I, I was I was traumatized for two years, bro. It fucked me up in the head. Um, you know, me choosing bad drugs to, to deal with the stress and the depression and the sitting in the house can't walk no more. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nigga that played ball every day. I had some of the strongest ladies you ever fucking seen. So that shit played a lot on me because my, my legs was like, you know how they say when you worship your God, you don't worship nothing else. It was like, I worship my legs more than I worship my God. Mm-hmm. And I lost my leg. I lost the ability to do the things that I did and to understand the gift that I had. I want to stop you right here. Yes, sir. This is a, this is a future episode. Okay. We we gonna call that a, we call that a tease in the business. Okay. We gonna put a pin in this one. But we gonna bring we gonna pull that pin back out <laughs> a little bit down the road. You, you see, I knew something. All right, I got because you because I that triggered something, and I'm already thinking and copy. We just we just tied you in for another joint. Say now, no more. <laughs> say no more. I'm available. <laughs> now, uh, tell me this: Who is your favorite artist? My favorite Give, artist. I'm let's, a, I'm let's, let's, let's break, it, wait, hold up. Let's break it down into both categories. Give okay. me your favorite rap and give me your favorite R and B. Because right, it's two different favorite, moods that we be in at times. People gonna be mad at this shit. I already know it, and I'm gonna keep it real with you. I got eight daughters. But King of R and B was R. Kelly. Y'all can't take oh, shit man. from his music. His music, Hashtag bro. I'm no talking Robert. about his music. <laughs> I'm talking about his music, not him's personal life. His music was phenomenal, bro. It was phenomenal music. Everybody in the '90s know damn well. Without R. Kelly, that R and B music was ass. I had a lot of Robert in my phone until I watched them joints. That's yeah, the right, I got, right, I got right. Daughters yeah, like, like I said, you know, it, it choose. But you can't erase. Yeah, you can't erase the catalog that the man has. If we're strictly talking music, then dove you. If you're but not talking it, it, you know, outside of wax, then yeah, you gotta have him on your list. 
But, <laughs> but if, if you take him out the place, if you take him out the spot, I mean, I'm gonna be real. The top nigga for real, for real, was always Michael Jackson. All right, so you got Michael. Is it Michael ain't R and B though? Mike is all over. Mike can do anything. Mike, Mike ain't R and B. All right. Well, you want R and B? I'm gonna because I said R and right. B. If I, if I take R, R. Kelly right. away, <laughs> if I take R Kelly away, give me Usher all day. All right. I ain't mad at that at all. Not at all. Yeah. You can't be. You can't hate Usher. Yeah. Now, I'm saying, he who, did. He did my life though. I was living when he dropped that album Confessions too. That was my fucking life. I was living. I was living that life when he dropped that album. I'm talking about all that with the the baby and it got. The, yeah, I was living that shit. I was going through that shit. Had to yeah, make that, that phone call and everything. I, I know that joint hit too clo- too close to home for a lot of people. <sighs> uh, that's good music though. If you got yeah. people, if you got people listening, and like you said, you get a feeling, you get a sound, and it's like, oh my god, that's the feeling. That's the sound. That's what you're looking for. That's. that's I, you, the note you're trying to touch. It's with. called relatable music, bro. If if you drop a song and you make it so relatable that a person can feel it from themselves because they're going through the same emotion, that's why the pen is greater than a freestyle. Niggas don't understand when you take that time and you put them words together. That no freestyle can beat that pen. It's a certain level of artistry. Artistry is the word of the of the day with music. Is we've lost the artistry of music. Now people are just saying anything and hoping that the beat catches it. Or they um, punching in. They punching in. One word punch ins. One word. Yeah, 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 I get kicked and I ride fast. I do this and I do that. That's all they do. Yeah, punch in. They punch in. Because it's, it's no... just re- it's repetitive and it's just something catchy that people could just bop their damn head to. It's not something that you're going to go, oh my God, I felt that joint. It's just, I was riding and it was just something to have on in the background. Right. And most now, people get caught by the beat anyway. Yeah, because you're not the paying attention to the, you, you're not, the, the words matter. <laughs> like, so my man told me the words don't matter no more. The words will always matter because it's yeah. music. If I to want to just real, real hip hop, you can never say that because we had to listen. We had to listen. We came from a place where though you had to listen to this. This was new. This was fresh. The words are what pulled you in. The, like, <laughs> yeah. If I wanted right. to listen to instrumentals, I'm gonna listen to jazz. But yeah, look, my favorite rapper. Yeah. I, Who your favorite rapper? Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes. Wow, that is a crazy answer. <laughs> okay. No, but if you why listen Buster? to me rap, you hear it. You understand why? He's my energy. He's my mentor, and never I never met that man a day in my life. And copy that. I mean, hey, opinions are always subjective. You know, that means like no, music. like when it hits your you, ear. Like, it, music is always about when it hits your ear. Like you said, I'm going through this exact same thing. If you going through this, and somebody else ain't, of course that joint gonna hit you harder than the person that is not going through it. Right, so you can't ever tell nobody with the with music, even if it's I don't know. Like again, working it, it, from working my whole from working thing about security, Buster, bro. My, from working for security, I've seen niggas lose their mind on metal shows, and because right. that joint is hitting them, right. you don't know what the hell they talking about. You don't know what is going on, <laughs> but that's what I be saying. But Buster Rhymes to me, bro, he had he had said this, he had said this free. He, um, it was a freestyle, but he ended up writing it as a verse. But he did it with on um, the bull. Um, what's the bull? Oh man, I forgot. He was he part of the flip bull squad. But Buster said, "I always roam through a forest, just like a brontosaurus, born in the month of May." So my son is Taurus, kick you in your face like my fucking name was Chuck Norris. Make you sing the chorus, rock with a beat, and then turn into a warrior. She remained nameless, my victory remained flawless. Like, come on, like niggas wasn't saying nothing of that manner, and my that mom, way he was mom. he was delivering it, it was crazy. My wife loved Buster. I said, my mom, I don't know how that went. My <laughs> wife loved Buster. Mom, talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Before we wrap this one up now, yeah. again, uh, how do they send in the music? How do they get in the rotation? Where do they find themselves being in the rotation? All right, well, this is how we're going to do it, man. We're going to make it real easy as always. It's newfamilymanagement at gmail.com. And all you got to do is send in three songs. Please make sure they songs. I don't want to freestyle. I want to see your artistry. That's what it's about. Showing the person how dedicated you are to yourself. You know what I'm saying? You also can reach me on 
Instagram at jbrody215. That's J underscore B-R-O underscore D215. You know what I'm saying? I'm also on Facebook at Akeem Johnson under my real government. Type me in I-K-E-E-M Johnson. You know what I'm saying? And network with me. Let's make something happen. And I ain't scared to do features. None of that. If you about your music game, then you want to get down with Family Affair Radio. Copy that. Jay. I appreciate you coming on. Like I said, we put in a pen in that situation and we will be bringing you back on because we got a whole series of situation that we are going to dive into. All right. I'm appreciate- with it, bro. I'm waiting on you. I appreciate the opportunity bringing me on. Ain't no doubt. Philly support Philly. That was episode 128. We yes, sir. are out. One. Up. I'm hitting the wrong button. We're not out yet, y'all. My bad. False start. We are. <laughs> I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Feel it, feel it.